Hello friends and welcome, ZQuixotics here, and I would never tell you to grief in a game. It is absolutely something you should not do. That thumbnail was not telling you to grief. No, that thumbnail was clickbait to get you to enter this video and learn what you can do when the game is really toxic and you're really far behind. How might you still be able to win the game? You don't have to plan to play this way every single game. Um, as my team started to lose and everyone started just like pointing fingers blaming, I kind of realized, you know, if we just play normally, we're going to lose. So I need to try to try to mess things up, make things weird and so I decided to buy a shadow amulet and an agonim shard uh, right around here at like 20 minutes now you don't always have to buy these items depending on the heroes you're playing mainly we need to creep cut and rat the enemy and force them to constantly come back to their half of the map Warlock has no form of escape, so that's what the Shadow Amulet is for, and then I need Wave Clear, so that's what the Aghanim Shard is for. Other heroes have much more natural Wave Clear, natural escapes, uh, things like that. Someone like uh, Earth Spirit, for example, has a lot of mobility, clears the wave with some spells and then rolls out, but he does show himself, which isn't the best for him. Someone like Jakiro can dual breath from Fog of War, and no one even sees it on the minimap, so he can stay pretty safe, but again, he has no escape. So depending on the hero you play, you may need to itemize towards this. Once you identify you want to start playing this way, get some observers, get a smoke possibly if you think the enemy has really good map control, kind of depends on the state of the game. You need to walk to wherever you're going to start ratting and cutting the waves. The reason it's important to walk is because we need our teleport to get back safely. Uh, that might just be it. But uh, the second part of this plan is to one, get a lot of farm for ourselves by ratting stall out the game by constantly bringing heroes back. And then because enemy heroes come back to their own half of the map, we can teleport to our half of the map. And then hopefully, you know, if you have a coordinated team, make a smoke play. If it's not a coordinated team, hopefully the enemy is just like diving like you're about to see and you get to teleport back in and try to win that fight. Because when you are this far behind, any kind of kill is very, very valuable to your team. And even like you lose three heroes, they lose two heroes. That's probably still good for you when you're this far behind. So it's very important to walk and then set up some observers and sentries to help make it safe for you In this case a fight's gonna break out right away and I identify like hey I see gyrocopter here He wasn't it wasn't because I was ratting But this is kind of what you're looking for that usually you're doing the ratting so some hero shows up um, This case I just knew he was here and I see that my team's getting to a fight I have my ultimate so I am going to show up I'm not just going to totally ignore my team because if they keep dying and the enemies just keep getting kills Then this whole ratting thing isn't really going to lead to much and again, this is where it's just not going to work out sometimes, depending on how big of a lead they have. Sometimes you will teleport to fights and you will still just lose and feed. It's the hard part. It's tough for me to say, like, how you know when you should come back or you should ignore fights. That's uh, it's difficult. So I'm just going to keep doing it. I'm going to walk back out. I'm going to de-ward for my team and place an observer safely uh, on this half of the map as well because my team needs to not die while I'm ratting and I want to make sure they don't know where I am so they can't just kill me easily. Here is an observer for myself to protect me. Going to check another cliff because my plan is to be shadow amuleted in the, in the trees to make it very difficult to find me, to waste their time when they look for me. Even if they do end up killing me, they're spending extra time down here, which means hopefully my team is catching up. And even if we're not, as long as we're not falling behind, 13K at 20 minutes, that's pretty bad. 13K at 30 minutes, 40 minutes, that's not so bad. I mean, it's still not great, but uh, that's much more playable. So the longer you can drag out the game, the better for your team when you are behind. So something like this, I'm just making sure there's no enemy vision in this area at all. I do not want to be killed, kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, the longer I can stay alive and do this stuff, the better. Now, unfortunately, I just got here. I just set up. I, I cleared one wave and immediately another fight's going to break out. We lost four heroes and had a buyback. They lost three heroes, but because they're so far ahead and because the heroes we killed happen to be core heroes and mainly we lost... Well, we lost two cores and two supports and a buyback on a support. You can still see, we still ended up quite positive in terms of gold. XP went even, which is favorable to a team that's really losing. So even when you have these uh, like uneven trades, it's actually still good for you when you're really far behind. We're walking back out. We're going to start ratting again. And the thing is that I want to say here, the reason why it's good when supports do this is because we are worth less. Our death timers are shorter. We have less net worth. So when we get picked up, it's not a huge deal. Let your carries... You know, do this safe farm from the wards you've placed. They farm all these protected areas, and we take the big risk as the support players because it's just not as big of a deal when we end up dying. So here, this is how I am doing it on Warlock. I am just going to, like, Shadow Amulet, do this kind of ratting stuff. He even saw me. When you cast, like, it depends on the spell. Upheaval does not reveal me, but... 
Uh, Fatal Bonds does show me on the minimap. So he saw that I was there, he came over, well, that's what the Shadow Amulet is for. It, it forces the enemies to carry detection, which when they're massively ahead, they have already filled up their slots with items. So he didn't have any detection for me and he decided to just leave. So I actually don't have to panic TP right away. I'm just gonna hide in the trees. Even without a Shadow Amulet, you can try to do this. It's just risky. Shadow Amulet happens to be like a pretty decent item for Warlock, which is why I don't mind buying it. But I wouldn't really do it on another support where it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, you would just depend on like being in the fog of uh, war. It's like killing the creep wave quickly and then hiding in these back tree lines. Because there's so many back here. This is why I'm checking the cliffs. Because if they don't have a cliff ward, it is such a waste of time to be like, there's a support somewhere here. Where is he? That's to like weave through every single tree line. And if you have like some kind of observer to see them coming, then you just know like you loop de loop around the trees, you like avoid them, stuff like that. So um, the idea here is we're just wasting time. And as soon as they're gone, we're going to start cutting creep waves again like this. I should have been more careful when I did this, but this is what a lot of people usually do as a support when you're losing, right? Okay, I, I gotta go like push out the waves. I'm just gonna do this normally, but this is where the enemy team is playing because they're winning. This is where they've set up their observers. They wanna kill your team as they come into these areas. So, you know, kind of like this. When you defend in this area, this is where the enemies are. By spending the time to walk all the way to the enemy's half of the map, this is where they are not because they are up here. And so you start killing a creep wave and they go, hey, I don't want that guy to kill that creep wave. So they TP back. Even if they kill you at this point, they have teleported back. It's gonna spend, uh, it's gonna take like 20, 30 seconds to walk all the way back up here. The creep wave has to make his time up here. You are buying time, you are forcing them to come back. And when they come back, right, and you see heroes show up here, that is the opportunity for your team to go, okay, there's one guy here, maybe there's two guys there, right? Maybe we can push up here. Maybe we see one hero here, maybe we can try to kill that hero. These are the opportunities we're looking for that are possible because we are forcing enemies to come back. When they just kill us right here, what's the opportunity, you know? Like, okay, sure, maybe like if, they, if someone split up here, then we can do that. But if not, they kill you here and they go, hey, let's push now, and we're here. Look, from here to here, we did it. Now, they're not gonna do it right now just because like the heroes that are alive, but uh, if I was the only one that died, then they feel confident, yeah, five versus four, we can push up, we're right here. But when they kill me back here, it's like, okay, we can go, but it's gonna take us like 30 seconds to get here. And in that time, hopefully your team maybe like cuts the next wave, pushes this out, like this Earth Spirit here, he sees us feeding in the bottom lane. He's like, okay, that means top is safe. So I have to clear all of this out. And he's gonna shove this in and that's going to bait the, the gyrocopter to actually come over here. So gyrocopter, as he responds, he sees all of this. Arguably, he should maybe teleport here with Alchemist because this is, uh, 20 seconds, I'm still dead, Brewmaster's dead for a minute. They have, you know, like 15 seconds to take this creep wave here and force out a, a glyph and take it. Now, if they wanna just like fall back and secure the next Roshan, that's also kind of okay. It depends on the situation in the game. But in this case, he decides to come here because of the ratting. Now, it's not me that's ratting, it's the Earth Spirit that's kind of like pushing in the wave this time, but that's sort of what we're looking for. Now, our team, once he comes down here, we know, hey, Gyrocopter respawned and he's here right away. He probably teleported, which means if we had our heroes alive, we could fight here. But even if we're dead, we're not being pressured because Gyrocopter felt the need to come over here where Creep Wave had been pushed into him. The enemy team just took the Aegis, which means they tend to push up with the Creep Wave. So I'm assuming they're all up here and that's how I know it's safe or I'm gonna take the bet that it's safe and come out here and try to cut the next Creep Wave. So as long as my team can kill this Creep Wave, which you see they just mostly did, uh, either through like a fortification of the tower or if your team has Wave Clear, stuff like that, your team kills this creep wave, you cut the next creep wave, that means they're not gonna have any creeps to break back door and they can't take your base. Unless perhaps they've taken another lane already and no one on your team has pushed it out, then they're gonna have back door, but at least they're not gonna have creeps to like tank the tower for them, so it is a little harder. Um, but this is why you want to, you know, be prepared back here and cut this. Now, Alk actually is not with his team, but fortunately he still doesn't have detection for me. So I can TP back and this is where you can force mistakes from the enemies. If Alchemist isn't here, how can he join his team instantly? He doesn't have boots to travel. He also has no creeps because we killed them all. He literally just has to run down here. We can immediately start a five versus four in front of our towers. And this is us trying to capitalize on the enemy mistakes. Either they were all up here 
and we cut the creep wave safely, we just bought our team a ton of time. Or someone is back here trying to defend the creep wave. As long as we get out alive, we can then take a fight where we have the advantage. I also wanna show you guys, so this is the creep wave that my team is going to kill. This is the creep wave that I'm going to kill. So when the next creep wave spawns here at 37 minutes, I want you to see how much time we buy. The, the creep wave has to walk all the way around the map, and maybe I even cut this creep wave too if I was still waiting here because Alchemist didn't get me, right? Uh, it takes 50 seconds for this creep wave to walk all the way around here. That is a fifth of the Aegis timer. It could be uh, the amount of time you need for a hero to respawn. It is a lot of time you're wasting from the enemy, plus it's gold you're getting to work towards your big items. I'm almost at my agonims off of all this creep cutting I've been doing, and that's gonna help you win these fights when they happen. At this point, I probably should have slowed down on the ratting and just played with my team, because you can see 25 minutes ago, we were 20K behind. Now, it's pretty much an even game. 5K at 44 minutes is really nothing. Uh, but I was a little mentally checked out, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but if you do reach this point, maybe consider unmuting your team because it's actually, it's a very winnable game at this point. We do win this game, it takes 15 more minutes. Uh, both teams throw a little bit, you know how it goes, pub games. Um, but I don't need to keep ratting. I have done what I needed to. I bought the time for my team to recover. We baited some mistakes from the enemies through all of this. So here I should probably stop because at this point, if I die, now it's a big deal. Earlier when I started, I was pretty low level. My death timers weren't that long. And if I was dead, like I could always buy back stuff like that. I do have buyback. I recommend you save buyback when you start trying to do these plays. But my death timer is quite long. We're getting late into the game. So even my death at this point is a huge deal. And because it's close to even, that's why I'm saying like just regroup at this point. Just try to take like a proper fight. Uh, of course, depending on how toxic the team is, all that, you know, I know it's very hard. So maybe you will keep ratting. Uh, but at this point, it's just. Uh, less beneficial. The the ways to instantly get killed are a lot faster. Enemy cores are more likely to have blinks, um, like Abyssal, stuff like that. So the second they see you, blink Abyssal, you're dead. And then you're dead for so long. Uh, earlier, right, we bought 50 seconds of time, which means even though I was dead, by the time the creep wave gets here, I might have respawned based on my cooldown timer. But now, it's really long. It's 85 seconds, which means even if I die like back here, 50 seconds all the way up here, they still have 40 seconds of me being dead to take our base. So deaths at this point are much more costly. I'd be a lot more careful. Give it a try. You'll definitely feed the first couple times you do this if you've never really done it before. But if you're losing because the game is going terribly, what's it matter? You're going to lose anyways. What's a few extra deaths, right? It's, it's no big deal. But when you learn how to safely get out on the map, how to read the map to understand like, hey, they're coming for me, I gotta get out, or hey, I know I can walk out. When you learn to identify that, you can buy so much time through these plays that it might give you a chance to recover. Again, disclaimer, I know many of you are gonna comment on it. You will not win every game doing this stuff. It is simply not possible, but a couple extra games here and there is all you need to climb MMR. And that's why I personally, okay, actually this game, I was mentally checked out. So not the best case, but usually I try as hard as I can. I guess I was still trying this game, but I wasn't, I, I literally read a webtoon guide. I, I died, I bought back and died again. I had 70 seconds earlier at like 30 minutes. I just started reading. I was so convinced we were gonna lose at that point, but here we are with the win. So don't give up, keep trying, stay focused. Good luck.